Hi, in this lecture, we are going to learn about how do we go and deploy our vRealize login site appliance in clustering mode. Now, in the last lecture, we had deployed our vRealize appliance in a standalone mode. So, as you could see that we are logged into our ESXi host, esxi-01.govmlab.local. And in this particular host, we had deployed this particular virtual machine, which is our vRealize login site appliance VM. Now, if you click on that VM, click on console, and that's the IP address of our virtual machine. As you do see that, so we can actually provide this particular URL in the browser, and let's try to get access to our vRealize login site appliance. So now, as you could see that this is our vRealize login site appliance, and just to see that deployment mode, we can click on the management section. So as you could see that, that's where we have a management. Under that management option, we do have a cluster option. So let's click on cluster. And currently, if you do see that, how many nodes do we have in this cluster? Because we had deployed this appliance in a standalone mode, and that is the reason it only shows one node. And having IP address 172.20.10.96. So now what we are going to do we are going to deploy another instance of our vRealize login site appliance and we'll join that instance to our existing deployment or we will join that instance to our primary node. And this is going to be our primary node. So with that, let's get started. So let's go back to our ESXi host. Let's close this console. Now, if you do see that we have already deployed vRealize-02 virtual machine right here. So let me expand this view. So now if you do see that, we have already deployed another instance of vRealize login site appliance. So let me show you to the console of that virtual machine. So click on console and look at that. So that is our vRealize login site second instance having IP address 172.20.10.97. So now let's provide this particular IP address in the browser 172.20.10.97. Press the enter key. So now look at that. We, it prompt us to the setup configuration. So if you remember, we realize login site appliance is a two-step process as we have discussed in our very first lecture, where in the first stage, it will go and deploy that particular appliance with the right set of configurations. And then in the next, and then in the second stage, we are actually going to do the con required configuration for our vRealize login site appliance. So we have already done the phase one where we have already deployed our second instance of vRealize login site appliance. And now we are going to proceed further with the phase two of setting up this particular appliance. So click on next to begin. And that's where we have to figure it out. That's where we need to find out what is our deployment type. Do we want to deploy as a standalone node or do we want to deploy it as a cluster? And that's where in this particular lecture, we are going to talk about join existing deployment. Now, what does that mean? Now, it tells us very clearly that we already have a one instance of VRealize login site appliance running in our infrastructure. And this new instance or second instance, we would like to join with our existing deployment in the clustering mode. So click on join existing deployment. Now here we have to define the FQDN of the login site primary node. So what is going to be our primary node? This is the node which is going to be our primary node and that is the FQDN. So let's provide that FQDN vrli.govmlab.local. Click on go. And now if you do see that, it tells us very clearly that request to join was received successfully. To complete the process, you will need to access the cluster management page on the primary node and authorize this worker to join. So what we are going to do, click here to access the cluster management page and look at that. It tells us that 172.20.10.97 has requested to be added as a worker node. So the very first node is going to be our primary node and the rest all nodes we keep adding to this particular cluster is going to be as a worker nodes. So it's asking for the permission, click on allow. And let's wait for a few minutes to get this process to be completed. And we'll see that this particular new appliance gets populated under this nodes section. And look at that. What it says that it says that worker added successfully. And now if you do see that 
has been successfully added to our existing deployment and the status is connected. So now we have successfully added our second instance of vRealize login site appliance to our cluster. And now what we can do, we can actually go and define a new virtual IP address and that is going to be our integrated load balancer IP. So what we are going to do because now we do have a two nodes, one primary node and one worker node. Similarly, we can have a multiple worker nodes and whenever the request is coming to vRealize login site, the request is going to hit this virtual IP address and that integrated load balancer will take care of distributing this request across all of the nodes of that vRealize login site cluster. So now click on new virtual IP address and let's try to give a new address as 172.20.10.98 and we are going to give FQDN as vrli-02.govmlab.local. If you want to give any tags, you can go and define the tags. Click on save. And now if you do see that, it clearly tells us that virtual IP has been added successfully. And now here it gives us information about the IP address and the FQDN. So now let's try to give this particular IP address in the browser and let's see that what it prompt us to. So let me give this IP address HTTP 172.20.10.98. Click on advance, click on proceed and look at that. Let's provide the password. Click here to log in and look at that. We are able to access our vRealize login site dashboard with this virtual IP. So if you remember that, if you go to the cluster page again, none of our vRealize login site instance is having 10.98 IP. So that's a virtual IP and that's where as soon as we hit this particular IP, this IP is going to distribute the request to primary node as well as on the worker nodes and that's how it actually does the internally. It actually performs the load balancing functionality for better performance and the high availability. If you do see that once we added this particular worker node to our existing deployment, we do see a pause sign. Now, what does that pause sign means? Pause sign means if you want to put that particular node into maintenance mode, we can put a node into maintenance mode for n number of reasons. Maybe we are trying to do some kind of upgrades on that particular node. So we can actually go and put that node into a maintenance mode. Same like what we do with our ESXi host. So now let's try to put that node into maintenance mode. And, and one more thing to notice that if you look at this cross sign, it is not available or it is grayed out. The reason why it is grayed out because you cannot delete the node from the existing cluster without putting that node into maintenance mode. So even if you want to delete worker node from the existing deployment, you first have to put that node into maintenance mode. And after putting that node into maintenance mode, only you can go and delete that node from the cluster. So now because it's a lab environment, we don't want to have multiple instances running in our virilized login site cluster because it would be consuming a lot of resources and the storage consumption as well. So let's try to remove that node from the cluster. So let's first put that node into maintenance mode. So click on that pause icon and look at that. It clearly tells us that entering maintenance mode. Are you sure you want to put that node into maintenance mode? Yes, we are pretty much sure about that. So click on continue and you do see that it tells us that worker node is now in maintenance mode. Let's try to refresh that page and look at that. Now if you do see that the status has changed from connected to maintenance, right? Now if you want to take this node out of the maintenance mode, then just click on this icon and it will again bring that node into the clustering. But now as of now, we are actually going to remove this node from the cluster. So after putting that node successfully into maintenance mode, click on that, remove this node icon. Now before we go and proceed with the deletion of that node, look at this warning message. This warning message says us very clearly that two node cluster are not supported. It is recommended that you add at least one more node to the cluster. Now it's pretty obvious that if you have a two node in your cluster, it cannot be 
uh, a functioning cluster because it, it always break you into the split brain kind of scenario and the recommended thing is always have at least three node in a cluster so the bare minimum requirement is to have a three node cluster now let's click on this cross icon and look at that what it says it says that are you sure you want to remove this node yes we want to remove this node from the cluster so click on remove node and you will see that this particular node will, is removed as you could see that this particular node has removed from our cluster and now we just have a one primary node in our v realize login site and because we just have a one primary node in our v realize login site deployment so there is no point of having a virtual ip address as well and there is no need of any integrated load balancer so let's go and delete this virtual ip address as well so click on delete virtual ip address click on delete and you will see that virtual ip address has also gone deleted successfully as you could see that we have successfully put that node into maintenance mode and then we remove our worker node from the virilize login site cluster and we have also deleted virtual ip address this concludes our lecture on deploying virilize login site appliance in a clustering mode where we have learned that how do we go and add new instances of virilize login site appliance to the existing deployment and how do we go and configure virtual ip address to provide load distribution capabilities across these virilized login site appliances and it also provides us high availability and redundancy in case of any of the virilized instance goes for failure.